Hey, good morning, everybody. Lee Lowell here, smartoptionseller.com. How's everyone doing today? It is Saturday, January 30th, 2021. We are getting towards the end of January already. Listen, we've got a lot of talk to talk about today. I mean, everyone who's been watching the markets and even people that aren't watching the markets are all talking about GameStop. So we will be talking about GameStop today in this video. I've got so many calls from people, so many emails saying, what's going on? What happened in the market this week? What is the deal with GameStop? What happened? Brokers are not letting you trade and it's gone up like thousands of percent. People are making millions of dollars. Lee, tell me what is happening with GameStop. All right, so that's what we will be doing today. I'm gonna to show you some charts. I'm going to show you some options trades. I'm going to talk about what is happening with the short sellers and, and why they've gone bankrupt or, or lost billions of dollars. It's just insane. And I've never seen anything like it in my 30 years being in the business. This is even bigger than Bitcoin. And Bitcoin's been crazy as well. So let's jump right in and talk about GameStop and some of the other heavily shorted stocks that have gone up this week as well. We'll, we'll look at all of them and I'll, I'll give you an idea of what's been happening and, and some of my thoughts on on what's been happening and, and a couple of things that I've done as well. So let's jump right in and talk about GameStop. Let's first of all open up the chart for GameStop so we can see what's happening. Okay, here is a chart of GameStop. Now, for those of you that may not know, GameStop is a physical retail brick and mortar store where you can buy and sell video games and video game equipment and, and all stuff like that. And and I have a, a son who, uh, a 15 year old son who in the past, we've gone to GameStop many times to buy video games for him. And you know, it, it's one of those stores that, that all gamers know and have flocked to in the past. But over the last few years, we all know physical retailers have been going out of business because everything's moving online. And even video games are all being downloaded these days. So you don't even have to go into the stores anymore. So GameStop w was going the way of Blockbuster where you just, people don't need to go into physical stores anymore. So GameStop's been on, on the way out. And, and as you can see, here's a, a chart of GameStop going back about two years or so. I mean, the stock hasn't been more than, you know, $5 a share for, many, many years. Uh, I can go back even farther. Let's take a look at, um, we can look at a weekly chart. This goes back to, you know, just, uh, 2012. And you can see the stock $20 here, um, got up to, you know, high thirties here. But for the last four or five years, it's been just downtrending, moving along with, with all, all these other stores going out of business. And just in the last, 2019, it's been a sub $10 stock, $5 stock. And you know, no one would ever think otherwise. But but what's happened with GameStop uh, recently and in the past is that there are people out there that are shorting the stock. And for those of you that might not know, shorting a stock means that you actually sell a stock hoping that its price will go down. You don't have to own the stock first in order to sell it. I was trying to explain to my son yesterday, he's like, how can you sell something that you don't own first? He's like, I don't understand how people who sold the stock were losing money. Didn't they have it first and then they just sold it? In the, in the stock market, one of the things that you can do is what's called shorting the market. And you don't have to own the stock first. You're actually selling the stock as your initial transaction. So instead of buying it, you're actually selling it hoping that the price will go down and then you can just buy it back at a cheaper price if the stock actually falls. So there are these big hedge funds that you've heard about that are shorting millions and millions of shares of the stock, hoping that the price goes down. They're all hoping that GameStop was just going to go bankrupt and their shares would be worthless and they'd make all this money by selling the stock and then they can either buy it back for a couple pennies, lock in their gains. Well, apparently... Um, you know, just this past week, and let's move it out to, we'll go to, uh, let's go to a, a 30 minute chart so you can really see what's happening if my, okay. So on Monday, was it Monday? Was the 22nd Monday? 
on what day was the 22nd of January? That was uh, last Friday. Okay, so a week ago, last Friday, the 22nd. You can see here, we've got some action on GameStop. Here's January 22nd, and then it just starts to go up. Okay, it started out, um, you know, it was a $30, sub $50 stock. Actually, we can go back a little bit further to January 13th. It was still trading around $20 from, I'm over here. January 13th, and then it started to tick up into the 30s, and then it started to tick up into the 40s, and then we had a couple days where it was just hanging around high 30s, then all of a sudden last Friday, it started to move up, and then on Monday, it started to move up, and then this is where it hit a high of over, um, a, it hit $159 a share on this day right here, which was January 25th. And everyone's going crazy. I mean, it started out as a, a $30 stock, then all of a sudden it started to go up, hit all-time highs. Let's back this out a little bit so you can really see the dramatic moves before we hit almost five, $500 the other day. So here we go, back on you know January 13th, $20 stock right here. And then it went up to a high of $38 or so. And everyone's going out of their minds. Why is GameStop going up? And the, and the short sellers are selling more shares. And then it starts to tick up, goes up close to 40 something dollars, hanging around 40, hanging around thir high 30s, 40s. And then as we move out, it starts to tick up here on the January 25th. That's when we hit this all time high here of $159. And everyone's just going out of their minds. What's going on with GameStop? Apparently, you know, Reddit is an online uh, chat forum and they have all these categories, all these little subreddits they're called. And, you know, there's topics ranging from all kinds of things. And, and Wall Street and trading is one of these subreddits called Wall Street Bets subreddit at Wall Street Bets. And you got all these traders who congregate and talk about their trades. And all of a sudden, they're all talking about GameStop and buying GameStop. So you have a mass, these masses of individual traders who are starting to buy up GameStop. And you have these hedge funds who ha also have billions of dollars at their disposal that are, you know, they're probably still trying to short at this thing because they can't believe that that the market is going up against them. So they're trying to double down and sell even short, trying to push the market down with brute force with all the m billions of dollars they have behind them, thinking that they can push the market down. But in this case, individuals, the the you know, the, the small traders, retail traders, collectively was able to, to push back against these short sellers and ramp the market higher. Now, of course, GameStop hit $159 and then it came back down to uh, you know $65. But then, as you can see this week, this is what happened. It just started to tick up again, tick up again. Now, here in the pre-market on this was Thursday, it hit went over $500 a share, right? That's that's 10 times what it was trading $50 just on January 22nd. Massive move just destroyed the short sellers. Now, when when you are a short seller, you've sold the stock hoping that it's going to go down in price. Now, when it starts to go up in price, a short seller has to buy the stock back in order to cover themselves. They they will buy back at a loss. Now we're talking massive billions of dollars of losses here on GameStop because you know if they sold it at twenty dollars, thirty dollars, forty dollars, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, now it's going up to you know two, three, four hundred dollars. They have to buy all those millions of shares back, and in the process, it's just snowballing on itself. They're trying to buy the stock back. You got these individual traders that are still buying the stock outright, and you got other hedge funds that are also shorted. So everyone's trying to buy at the same time, and it just creates this snowball to the upside. Now, obviously, we hit $500 in the pre-market, and then it and then it tanked down to $115. This was after most of the brokers, Robinhood and Charles Schwab and Interactive Brokers, uh, I think all of them, Schwab may or may not have, I I, I don't know, um, decided to, they're going to limit or restrict the trading in these stocks because it, it's affecting the market too much. Now, there's a couple couple things that people are talking about. Number one, they're thinking that these, these brokers restricted the trading because the hedge funds 
were getting in their ear saying, hey, you got to stop this. We're losing too much money. You can't allow people to keep buying this stock. That's what some people are saying. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. But, you know, you got people with a lot of money saying, hey, you got to slow these people down. We're losing too much money. On the other hand, the brokers themselves were saying, you know, we had to we had to halt the trading because it, it was we have to protect the customer. We have to protect the market. We don't want things going crazy. So people are all up in arms about that, saying, well, why don't you can't restrict us from trading. You don't you're not restricting the hedge funds from trading. We know what we're doing. We know we have money in the market. Don't restrict us. We, you know, buyer beware. We're, we are aware of that. So there's a couple of different camps going on here. We've got the SEC now is probably doing an investigation on what's going on. But anyway, the restrictions have been lifted. As you can see, the market bounced off of the lows again and went above about $475. And then yesterday, Friday, January 29th, it closed about $312. So it's just been this incredible run this whole week. I've never seen anything like it. I was just mesmerized the whole week watching this happen. Um, I, I didn't get involved except for a very small amount. I, I, I traded some options and, and I'll let you see what I did. But this was just too insane. This was very insane for me. I, I you know, there's certain cases where, you know, I just stay out and I, and I watch the action from the sidelines because it's just too crazy. Now, some of you who may have gotten involved, great. I hope you made a lot of money because there was a lot of money to be made. And, and if you made some great uh, call option buying was just incredible. Selling put options. I sold some put options this week on GameStop, but but at very, very low strike prices. I'm going to show you wh how that happened. But so you got GameStop and then you have other stocks. Let's put it back a daily chart here. So, I mean, this is what you're seeing. Low, low, low prices, just flat line. GameStop's not going anywhere. And then you just had this massive run up. I mean, look at this is what's called a vertical. It's just gone vertical. Now, I will say that, you know, we know GameStop as a physical retailer is probably going to die out at some point. You know, I can't be sure, but that's just the wave of things. This, I believe this stock will eventually collapse on itself back down to $20 a share at some point. Can't make a prediction when that will happen or if it may, maybe it won't even happen. Who knows? Maybe GameStop will turn itself around and become profitable and turn into a great business again. Who knows? But it's hard to believe that a company like GameStop, whether they reinvent themselves or not, can still be trading at $400 a share. That's just my opinion. You know, do what you want with it. I, I'm not trading it. I'm not, you know, I'm not ready to put some big money on the line for that because I have no idea when the, when the market will come back down. So I'm just staying out, staying on the sidelines. But you have other stocks like, um, I'll show you some other stocks that were that were big news this week. We have AMC, which is the movie theater chain. You know, obviously with the pandemic, no one was going to the movies anymore because you couldn't. And so AMC, one of the biggest movie theater chains in, in the U.S. at least, is just on a downward spiral. And then all of a sudden this week as well, started to go up, back up again because these are very heavily shorted stocks. And, I, and I'm going to show you a website that I use that, that tells me how much of these shares are actually shorted. You have hedge funds and other you know, big money players that, that just sell these stocks, hoping that the price will go down. So this is AMC, not on the same scale as GameStop, but you know, it started out as a $2 stock and it ramped up over to over $20. So that's a big move for a lot of players, especially if you could buy thousands of shares, GameStop, uh, GameStop, AMC, um, BlackBerry was another one. You know, BlackBerry was the, all the rage before the iPhones came out. So BlackBerry was a 4 or $5 stock, and all of a sudden it went up to $29 a share. We have uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. Same thing. Um, had a pretty good jump this week. You know, this is all coming from, you know, these online chat rooms that are just gearing each other up to, to start buying these heavily shorted stocks. And if you can get enough momentum to the upside on these short stocks, everyone has to buy back the shares. So it just snowballs on itself. You got um, Nokia, you know, the phone maker, Nokia, $4, traded all the way up to almost $10. So it doubled itself. That, that's what you got, these, these stocks like this. So um, let me show you a website here that um, can show you some of these heavily shorted stocks. Now you can go to website, 
high high short interest.com right up here let me move myself forward so you can see so here's the names of of all the most heavily shorted stocks now how do you know if a stock is heavily shorted well you look at the the short interest this column right here short interest this tells you what percentage of the outstanding shares are actually being sold instead of bought okay so gamestop is the number one number one stock on the list and the short interest is 121% of the outstanding or the float of the shares. Float is the number of shares in existence, in existent, I believe, or outstanding shares, one of these numbers. Um, so I, I don't understand how you can have more than 100% of the sh outstanding shares being shorted. That means all out of all the shares that are out there for GameStop, all of them, more than all of them are being shorted. So I'm even a little confused on the number. But anyway, so you go down the list, you got AMC, you got Space, which is um, the Virgin Galactic holding stock. These are very high percentage short interest stocks, meaning there's so many people selling these stocks, hoping that their price will go down. And but and and when you have enough people that start buying these stocks, then you have this this perfect storm of everyone has to buy back at the same time. So you have these high short interest stocks, Bed Bath & Beyond. Um, you can just go through the list here. You can see a lot of these, these stocks um, that are heavily shorted. So if you get enough people talking about it, hey, let's buy these stocks, you can create this, this perfect storm of, of the stock just going vertical. And, you know, you, People have been taking their their chances. They've been buying the shares. They've been buying call options, selling put options, very bullish strategies. And, you know, obviously GameStop was the biggest player this week. So if you have an interest or you want to just be more in the know and educate yourself on short interest and, and, and what people are doing with certain stocks, you go to you go at any website you want. But I, I, I look at the shortinterest.com website and it tells you the percentage of the the amount of shares that are actually being sold to the short side. So, you know, that's where people are finding these stocks and that's why they're talking about these specific stocks. And and if you look at the chart of the last week of a lot of these stocks, you'll see that they, they've just gone vertical. So <clears throat> along with GameStop, there's, you know, obviously people have bought the shares, bought call options, sold put options. I just wanna show you, you know, some of the numbers here that, um, these option prices we're trading for. Now, one of the great things is, is that when, when stocks get extremely volatile like this, that means the option prices get very volatile as well, which offers opportunity to make, you know, decent amount of money. So if we go back to, um, let's bring up GameStop here. So you, you've got this, you know, one week trading that's just been incredible. Um, if you go to, let me let me show you what I'm looking ahead here. If we go to Interactive Brokers, um, I want to show you the chart, the volatility chart. Okay, so in Interactive Brokers, and you can also go to iVolatility.com. That's one of the websites I use to look at volatility numbers. But in, in, in Interactive Brokers, you can pull up volatility for any stock that you want. And, and its options. Now, this is uh, the volatility lab in Interactive Brokers, and this shows the volatility of GameStop options. Now, one of the one of the inputs that helps give an option its price, you know, when you buy a call option or you buy a put option, it, it has a price. You have to pay that price. And, and one of the components that helps make up an option's price is what's called volatility. And, and, it, and it's the fluctuation of the stock, okay? And the fluctuation of the stock um, gets put into a, a number and it, that gets put into the option pricing formula. So GameStop and back in December, 2020 right here, uh, here's the dates on the bottom, you know, GameStop volatility was, was under 50%. I mean, that's even high for a normal stock in itself under 50%. These are percentage numbers. You can see over here on, on, I'm sorry, this is, this is, uh, uh, is this the price of the stock? Yeah. Price of the stock here. And then I'm sorry, price of the stock on the left. And here's the volatility numbers on the right hand side. So you can see price of, um, GameStop here on the left hand side. And then the volatility just explodes. It goes from, you know, 125% down here. You can look on the right hand side all the way up over 600% volatility. That's just insane in that short amount of time. And I'm going to show you what that can do to option prices. Okay. If you're, if you're lucky to buy an option 
at you know 100% and then all of a sudden it rockets up to 600%, you're going to make money on that option regardless. Now, when you some people may have seen this. If you bought a put option this week on GameStop, hoping that the stock would go down and the stock actually went up, typically you would lose money on that, that put option because the stock went up instead of down. But because the volatility spiked so much, you could, you could have actually made money buying put options even as the stock went up because volatility went up at the same time. So if we bring up, um, let me go to, uh, let me check the volatility calculator here and bring up this website. So here's iVolatility.com and let me bring up GameStop. When you when you look at options, this is what an option uh, uh, an option calculator, an option pricing calculator to help you price out options. So on GameStop, let's just say, so they the, this when you put in the stock right here, I put in GameStop GameStop, it defaults on the left hand side to numbers that are out there in existence in the market. So it defaulted to um, GameStop. Last price of 325. It gives a strike price of 325 at the money, and it defaulted to a 600% volatility. That's just insane. Normal stocks trade, you know, 30, 40% volatility on, on a normal day, and and probably more like 25 to 35%. 600% we're talking. Those are these are numbers that I volatility comes up with that, and they're very in tune with what's happening in the market. So. If you, let's just say you you had bought a let's go out let's go out you know to February twelfth very short period of time um, the three hundred and twenty five calls and puts right here here's the value for the call and the put right here one a hundred and thirty nine dollars per contract that's thirteen thousand nine hundred dollars just to buy one option contract that's with a volatility of six hundred percent let me just show you what happens I'm gonna I'm going to lower this number down to 100%, okay, because even then that's still high. But on a normal times, GameStop would be trading at 100% volatility. Now watch what happens. These are these options are worth $139 per contract. You change the volatility down to 100. When I hit calculate, you're going to see these numbers change dramatically. They're going to drop dramatically. Hit calculate. Now look what happens. These option values went from 139 per contract all the way down to $24 per contract. That's a $2,400 cost coming down from $13,900 cost per one single co option contract. So volatility plays a huge, huge um, deal in uh, the, the, the option prices. So let me just show you something else. So let's just say that um, you had purchased a, when, when GameStop's at 325, let's just say you thought this thing was going to drop and you bought a hundred dollar put option. Uh, you know, we'll get both of the numbers here with volatility was at a hundred percent. Okay. So let's just see what happens. Okay. It doesn't, it volatility hundred percent. Okay, it's not even giving me a value. Let's 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 go out a little bit more in time here. Let's go to March nineteenth and see if I can get something here. Hundred percent volatility. All right. So what what this is saying is, you know, with the strike with the price at three hundred and twenty five dollars, a strike price of a hundred, because you think stocks are going to drop, you want to buy a put option, and volatility is at a hundred. A put option would cost with 100% volatility, a penny, you know, $1. Now, if volatility rises to 600, now it's going to be worth $53 a contract. Even if the price of GameStop goes up to $500 a share, the put option barely goes down. So if you were able to buy a put option, when volatility was at 100%, and even if the stock goes up, you're still going to make money. So people are making money buying calls and buying puts because volatility just rose so much. The volatility overtook the stock itself going up. So remember, when you buy put options and the stock goes up, that put option is going to drop in price typically. But volatility skyrocketed so much, it overtook the effect 
of the stock rising. So your put option went up as well and call options went up dramatically. So anything that people were buying, puts or calls, made money this week only because volatility spiked so much. It's incredible. So what what happened with some of these some of these options? Well, let's take a look at an option chain on GameStop. Okay, so here's our option chain on GameStop. Now GameStop last price was $312 on uh, yesterday, Friday, January 29th. And let's just look at some of these option prices. For February 5th, which expires you know, next Friday, you get six days, these put options, these downside put options, okay, they, the, they have 50 cent put options, $1 put options, every strike here, um, all the way down to a 50 cent. So, we talked about selling put options in the past. And when you sell a put option, not only are you getting the money right off the bat, but you're obligating yourself to potentially buy the stock at a, at that strike price. Now, with GameStop trading at $312 a share, you might be thinking, "Okay, well, I, I want to buy GameStop at you know, $20 a share, let's say, because it's at $312 you know, if I can get it for $20 in the next six days, uh, you know, let's just see what happens. So you scroll down and you can see that the $20 put options are trading, went out yesterday, almost 50 cents per contract. That's just insane. Someone's going to give you $50 for your obligation to buy GameStop at $20 a share. It's, it's trading at $300. You have one week's time. Do you think GameStop is going to fall from $312 all the way down to $20 by next Friday? Now, there is a possibility that could happen. If everything just collapses on itself, yes, GameStop can fall that far. But I, I don't think that's going to happen. There's just too many interested players right now. But but here's it, it, that's why it's just so insane. One-week option still trading around – look at this. 48 cents at 49 cents. The 19 and a half puts went out 50 cent bid at 60 cent. Now this is this is one of the things that I did. Now uh, in addition to me selling a couple one dollar puts on GameStop this week, these were trading you know you know 10 to 20 cents per contract. The one dollar puts and the two dollar puts now they're worth a penny, so they fell down in value. And you can even go out you know to the normal expiration February 19th. Uh, let's see where some of these things went out yesterday. Here comes the bids and asks populating. You know, the $10 puts on the February 19th options, 20 days from now, $10 puts trading 40 to 50 cents a contract. You know, even the $5 puts, 20 cents, fair value, 21 cents for a $5 put. That just obligates you to buy GameStop at $5. Not a huge investment. But anyway, so on February 5th, these things expire in a week. One of the things that I did yesterday, and this is our this is a guaranteed win. Like I, I I can make money no matter what happens, even if the stock collapses to zero or goes up to five thousand dollars this year, I will make money. And you know why? Because when things get crazy, option prices get crazy too. I was able to buy the twenty puts for one price and sell the seventeen and a half puts for an even higher price. So that's how crazy it was. Now you know that put option prices get cheaper as you get lower in the strike prices. So me being able to buy a 20 put f for a cheaper price than what I sold a 17 and a half put is just not, shouldn't happen. But when, when the stock is crazy like that and volatility is just powering up to 600%, the option prices get all out of whack. So you can find these discrepancies in the market. Now, let me see. I have the time and sales pulled up here. Now you have these these little one lots that trade um, because you have all these these retail traders that are trading one contract at a time. So here's the time and sales. Time and sales tells you how what each option price traded at a specific time of the day. And you can look at, at these for stocks as well. Stock prices, option prices, they're called time and sales. So yesterday, here's the 20 put. Yesterday at... Um, what time was it? Somewhere in here, I was able to buy, uh, let's see, where am I here? 
I think it was this one. Three. This is three. 3.23 in the afternoon Eastern time, I was able to buy a, the $20 put for 50 cents a contract. And then on the 17 and a half put, here's, here's my one lot that I sold. I sold it for 56 cents a contract. So I bought the 20 put for 50 and I sold the 56 for, I sold the 17 and a half put for 56. Now, Obviously, if there were more contracts, I could do that multiple times. In this case, there was only one contract. But that locked in a guaranteed $6 winner for me. And if the stock drops to zero, I'll make even more money because I'll own the, the 20 puts and I'll be short the 17 and a half puts. So that would give me a, 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 a maximum win of $250. And my maximum loss is no loss. $6 is, $6 is my maximum loss I can make. I can't lose any money. It's a can't lose trade. I can make $6 at, at the minimum and $250 at the maximum. So these are the discrepancies in option prices. So you can, you can look for these things, you know, on crazy stocks like AMC. Now you can see here, um, over here, these, this was the actual bid ask prices on the option at that specific moment in time. Now you can see at, let me see if I can show you a better example here. Um, let's see. So the 20 put was offered at, you can he see here, 50 cent bid at 51 cent offer on the, on the 20 puts at 321 in the afternoon. And at 321 in the afternoon, right here, 321, the 17 and a half puts were bid 52 cent bid at 76 cent offer. So you could buy the 20 put at 51 cents and you can sell the 17 and a half put at least for 52 cents, probably something higher than that. And as long as you cover your commissions, it's a can't lose trade. It's a, it's a win-win situation. So there are definitely discrepancies in option prices uh, when things go haywire like that. If you can find it, you do it as many times as you can because buying the 20 and selling the 17 and a half put for... Um, Buying the 20 put for less than what you sell the 17 and a half put is a guaranteed winner. I know there's people will say there's no guarantees in life, but this is actually a guarantee. You're going to make money no matter what happens. So it's just crazy. That's that's what's going on in, in the options market for GameStop. Now, like I said, the, the February 5th, 2021 options that expire in six days from now, today's Saturday um, option expiration is next Friday. You've got these downside put options that that still have a decent amount of premium in them. You got the 15 puts trading 26 bid at 32 cent offer, and and GameStop's at 312 bucks. I mean, you're 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 taking the risk, you know, a one week risk to see will GameStop fall all the way back down to 15 dollars a share. You know, it's it's just insane. So these are some of the some of the options that are out there uh, for for GameStop. And it's just been crazy. Now, what's going to happen next week? Who knows? I mean, the, the the stocks could keep going up. You know, you got the weekend. People are starting to read more. They're learning more. They're going on all these websites. Hey, what's happening with GameStop? What's going on with the short interest? Hey, I want to get in on the action. There's a lot of FOMO out there, fear of missing out. People want to get involved. And, you know, you can buy call options, but remember, with, with volatility at 600%, any drop in volatility, you're going to lose money whether the stock goes up or not. You know, you have volatility versus the stock price. Which one is going to affect that option more? Can the stock move up enough to offset any drop in volatility? Or if both volatility and stock move up at the same time and your long call options, that's a double winner. So you have stock price and volatility kind of playing against each other, and that affects the option price. And time to expiration as well. Time starts ticking away. <clears throat> time starts ticking away. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens. So that is our little lesson on GameStop. Crazy, crazy, crazy. All right, so that's it. So let's move on to our Saturday synopsis. This is the part of our video where we, we look at the charts. We look at some other charts um, what, uh, to see what happened over the last week and, and what may uh, move going forward for the next week. Uh, let's pull up our SPY, which is the uh, ETF for the SP 500. 
we had a pretty good down move the last two days in the market. If, if you're if you were looking at things other than GameStop and AMC, uh, you you were tracking the broad market and other individual stocks. We had a pretty good down move Thursday and Friday. Got a good pullback here. So let's take a look, see what we see in the market. Um, the S&P 500 had been moving up nicely, nicely, nicely. And then the last two days, Thursday and Friday, here's where we close out Friday, yesterday, January 29th, closed just below the 50-day moving average. And I have talked about the uptrending 20-day and 50-day moving averages. When a stock is in a good uptrend, that it should either bounce off the 20-day or 50-day. If it, if it moves well below the 50-day and starts heading towards the 200-day, we may have a turn of events, maybe a change in the, <clears throat> we may have a change in um, direction. So let's see what happened here. The SP 500 finished just below the 50-day moving average. You can see, let me see if I can blow this up a little more, a little dash mark on the right side of the the bar, this bar is one day's worth of trading. A little dash shows you where it closed for the day. So it closed below the 50-day moving average. It doesn't worry me so much. I mean, stocks can always trade below a 50-day moving average. What, what we don't want to happen is multiple days below the 50-day. We want to see some kind of bounce. So if we get, I have a rule of three days. So if, if a stock or, or uh, you know, an index closes above or below a certain resistance or support support level for three days in a row, that puts me on heightened alert that, you know, something may be changing. So this one day move down below the 50 day doesn't bother me. You can see here, these moves right here traded below the 20 day and then it snapped back higher. So I'd like to see what happens next week. We're in the middle of earnings um, season. So some of the stocks weren't, didn't put out numbers as well as people thought, or some of the numbers were decent, but yet the market still sold off anyway. So earnings typically sometimes can be a crapshoot. So I'm going to see what happens next week. I'd like to see the market bounce. You know, this could be a time to scale back into the market. If, if you've been waiting for a, a, a decent pullback and want to get in, you know, always look to, to some of the, the moving averages to help you decide where could be a good time to get in. A pullback, a pullback like this within a broader overall upward trend is usually a pretty good timing indicator that it could be time to get in a little bit. But you do want to see the market pull, start to move back higher uh, after the drop. So I may wait another day or two to see what the market does, but that's where we ended yesterday. Let's take a look at the, the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ. Let's look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ pulled back as well. It traded below, closed below the 20-day moving average, hasn't hit the 50-day yet. So the NASDAQ's been the strongest of the three. So I'll give it a couple more days, see where the market goes, see if it if it comes down even further, see if it bounces off the 50-day moving average. And uh, we'll just have to wait it out. The Dow Industrials got hit pretty good. That one closed well below the 50-day moving average. The 20-day and 50-day were very close to each other. So it didn't take much of a move to, to drop it below. Um, let's see, you know, we have this support level here. Let me see if I could move this line out a little bit longer. Let me, let me get rid of this one and I'll draw a new line here. So this was, this is sort of a line in the sand area right here for the market. You know, what, before it was, this was a resistance area. It broke through it. So now it becomes a support area. So if the market starts to dip down, it, it should, it should, potentially bounce right along this this level. So we want to see what happens next week. Uh, let's take a look at the VIX, the volatility indicator of the market. Sh definitely blasted higher this week, okay? Got out of its doldrums. And when the market goes down, the VIX goes up. This is the volatility indicator. So volatility is increasing in the market. Uh, pretty good move here. And we'll, we'll see what happens. If the, if the stock market starts to go back up, the VIX will start to go back down again. These spikes are usually very short-lived, a couple days at most. You get these big spikes, people get fearful, they buy up option prices, which in it, in turn shoots up the volatility. But you can see the spikes are very short in nature, only a couple days. So that, you know, if this starts to tick down, that leads me to believe the market itself will find its footing and start to go back up again, and the VIX will go back down. Let's take a look at some individual stocks, see what they've done. We, we look at uh, some of the most popular stocks out there. We've got Apple that had been on a nice 
move upwards after it broke out of the congestion pattern, hit a high, all-time high near $145 um, at the end of last week or, or beginning this week, and then it just dropped with the market itself. Tra- closed just under $132 a share, just below the 20-day moving average. So we've got this uptrending 50-day. Hopefully, it'll catch it, gain its footing, and go back up. I mean, these, these, these stocks are in, a, in an upward trend. Just remember, you're really not going to get much return on your money other than the stock market these days. The governments around the world are still keeping interest rates very low. You can't get any return on your money by keeping money in the bank. Um, you know, the vaccine for coronavirus is, is on its way out, still rolling out. Um, we're hoping that, that the economies around the world will get, you know, back to normal. It's somewhere down the road. So we, we are moving on the right path. Um, it's just taking a little bit more time than we would like. But in, I, I'm still bullish on the stock market. You know, I, I'm using these pullbacks to, to, to step into trades here and there because I'm in for the long haul. I mean, that's how, that's how I'm going to fund some of my retirement by buying stocks for the long term. And you have to use some of these pullbacks as your entry points. You know, some people will say, well, this is it. I'm waiting for the big drop. I'm waiting for this thing to drop so I can buy back in. Well, how do you know when the drop and the bottom is going to occur? You know, no one rings a bell that says, here's the bottom. So you have to scale in from time to time. You know, you can't be afraid to buy here. And if the market keeps going down, you buy a little more. Because if you're just waiting for the market to drop, and then all of a sudden it turns around. You're gonna say, "Well, I'm waiting for it to come back down again, so I can get back in." And that people use that that emotional psychology on themselves all the time, and eventually they just never buy in because they're just too afraid because they always think things are gonna drop. But you know, if you look at the long term history of the market, we we know that the stock market goes up. This is a chart of Apple. We can look at the long term chart of the stock market itself. The market goes up. Yes, we have dips along the way, but that's just part of part of investing. Okay, so we got Apple. Tesla was another one that had earnings this week. Tesla, and I had talked about this last week, I had drawn this congestion pattern. I said, when earnings come out, it's going to either move up big or move down big. Now, before earnings came out, Tesla started to go up, and earnings came out on this day here, and people weren't too happy. So, Tesla's come down. It's fallen below the 20-day moving average. Um, it's yet to be seen whether it'll keep dropping. Okay, people love Tesla and they're willing to keep buying it. So let's see what happens. Um, but but Tesla definitely uh, was down this week. What other stocks do we have? We got Microsoft that was trading in this channel, finally broke above it, but um, seems that it closed right near the the support the 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 resistance level let's draw this line out a little bit further here start here so you got this level right around here and so microsoft getting through it but maybe coming back down uh what other stocks do we have that we like to look at amazon amazon still still in this range has the congestion pattern still right in the middle. Looked like it was going to pop through, but came back down. Um, we've got, uh, what other stocks do we have that that we'd like to look at? AMD is another one of our favorites. Um, definitely starting to come back down a little. Couldn't get through the resistance. Has fallen below the moving averages. And now has moved into this little channel here. So I'd like to see AMD move back up. AMD is one of the stocks that we love. <clears throat> AMD is one of these stocks that we love. And so we want to see it move back up. AMD, what else do we have? Nike was another one falling down a little bit through the 20 day and 50 day. It's fallen below 50 day for a couple of days now. So we want to see where, where it goes from here. Um, you know, there's just a, this is just a general pullback in the market. Netflix. Let's take a look at Netflix. Netflix is another one we like to look at. Definitely had started to break through the upper resistance and has come back down. Had earnings. It's come back. To, earnings were here and then it came back down. So if you're looking to possibly get long Netflix, you know, this could be one of those times where, um, you know, you wait for the pullback to the 20-day moving average 
and you know go from there. You know, these are not recommendations. These are just things that I see, just ideas on timing. People always ask me about timing. When should I get in? And these are the, some of the things that you look for. You know, if you got a stock that's uptrending, or even if it's in the channel, you can try to wait till it hits the lower end and sell at the upper end if you're a day trader like that. But if you're a longer term, you want to wait for a pullback to, to some of the, the moving averages. That's just the way that we do it. And we always concentrate on out of the money options because that gives us even more cushion in case we're, we're, we're wrong or our timing isn't exactly right. All right. So that's it. You know, we're getting long again on this video. That's our Saturday synopsis. Once again, for next week, let's take a quick look. You know, market has come down to the 50 day moving average. Let's see if it could find its footing and we get the buyers back in to move it back up. But for now, um, it ended on a weak note. Uh, I just, you know, this could be one of those timing plays where it's time to jump in. We'll see what the next week brings. Okay, that's all for the Saturday synopsis for looking at the charts. Lastly, let's go to uh, our website so I can just make sure everyone's on board here. SmartOptionSeller.com. Download your free Put Selling Basics guide. Put your name and email address here. You'll get a free copy of our guide on how to sell put options and, and, and why we love it so much. You can always go to our services tab. We have two newsletters, Smart Option Seller and Vertical Spread Trader. Those are the newsletters that we run and we have our one-on-one -on -one coaching. I hope this has given you some valuable content in this YouTube video. Please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the red subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of the video. Leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. You know, tell me what you're thinking. You can comment right below. I will always answer. And um, th that's it. That's it for today. I hope it's been great for you. I hope you learned something here. And I hope everyone has a great weekend. This is Lee Lowell signing off.